Or just, what do I hit? Got me? There we go. Um, before I get to the game, before the game, I was stopped by an usher, an ESPN cameraman, and a security officer who personally thanked us for doing everything we've been doing protocol-wise, traveling the day of game, doing all that stuff to keep these games going because that's paychecks for them. If they don't have games, they don't get paid. Concession stands don't open. Bus drivers don't get people picking them up at the airport. Uh, I relayed that to our team. I think it's a very, very important part that not everybody gets a chance to see and hear, but for those people to personally stop me on the way to the court or just as we were walking around when we got here two and a half hours early, really, really made a huge impact uh, on our team and our kids. Uh, and, and just, again, making sure that we know why we're playing uh, and how much value that carries to everybody. So I'll leave it at that and take questions about the game. Paul, go ahead. I uh, yeah, just start of it. You feel like your 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 team, you know, stayed in it for for about three quarters. You just kind of wear down. I mean, yep. with, with, yeah. But, yeah, you do. I mean, when you when you see how well conditioned they are, how disciplined they are, how fast they play, it just has a wearing effect. And this is where playing having played our sixteenth game catches up to us a little bit. Uh, and that's okay. We, we understand that. This is, again, I think a, a South Carolina team that y'all know how much praise I gave them last year. I, I, I think they were uh, on their way to a national championship, and, and this team is just as explosive, just as deep, just as hard to guard, and just incredibly hard to get a shot off. The fact that we got off 71 shots is a small victory. Greg, go ahead. Hey, Mike, I was just curious going off of that. What can you do about Aaliyah Boston, if anything, or is she just, you know, not well, too good for you guys? I mean, you can you can try to pressure her a little bit more. You can send maybe a triple team, but then it's just going to be, I mean, it's Bria Bills night or Zai Cook's night if you do that. That's just what makes these guys so, so good. Um, and it's not just her size. I, I, I hate it when people just think, and I'm not saying you did this, Greg, but I, I just, when people go, oh, well, she's just so much bigger. She's incredibly skilled. She's incredibly smart. She moves without the ball. She seals you when the ball's in the air. Um, you know, she's just somebody I think a lot of anybody that we, we need more true low post players in the country. I would love for there to be more to go around like that. I would love for there to be more to go around like that. People need to study her. Um, people like her are going to about five schools in the country, and, and right now we're not one of them. So that's okay. We have to play the way we play, but all the credit goes to her. She's an incredibly hard worker. And it's not just because she's big, y'all. Now, she is that. <laughs> she is that. But she she works hard. She plays through the system. She she makes you wrong. Um, and, and I think is the key that those, those other kids feed off of. Alyssa, go ahead. Mike, at the 241 uh, point in the third quarter, you're down three, and then obviously the game gets away from you. So what do you learn from that point on about your team that you move forward with? Well, that, that we've got it in us. You know, we know it's there, and that's that puncher's chance we always talk about. Uh, we, we've got a puncher's chance to do it, but there's a lot of things that have to go right, especially on the road, especially on a day when you travel. All of those things magnify. You take those into a neutral site, and maybe that three-point deficit's maybe a little bit of a lead. And then the other team reacts a little differently. So you've got to take it all into account. Um, you know, what I take out of it is how our kids look doing it. Uh, we talked a lot about we, – we've been very harsh on ourselves about some film the last couple of weeks on just how we looked. There were times we looked frustrated. There were times we looked um, – out of sync. I don't think that's the case. I just think we keep playing teams that are still just a little bit better than us. And we can't put together the full 40 minutes it requires to win on the road against one of them. Matt, go ahead. Coach, a big day here with the Asia Wilson statue being unveiled. I'm just wondering, it, it's a lot of excitement here. What does that statue mean for the game of women's basketball? Well, I tweeted out about it. I went outside and took a picture of it. Uh, I, I think it's super cool that we were here the day that it got unveiled. And, and what I put at the end of my tweet is, you know, we need more of those. We need a, we need a statue of our, our great women athletes on every single campus in America. I think obviously that Asia is such a special story because she's a home state kid that stayed home and kind of got this thing going for 
for Dawn. They had it going in the right direction already, but she was the one that really, to me, put it over the top. Uh, and she's been such a gracious player and spokesman for our game. Um, I, I think it's a phenomenal uh, display of how important it is. And, and I hope more campuses will follow suit. I hope we can do something one day for some of our women's players. Um, and we're, we're uh, you know, it's kind of one of those double-edged swords. You, you knew they were going to play with a lot of emotion. That video, her speech, I mean, her quote, I'll say this. I, I, and and I, I don't mean, I mean, her quote to me, I read every Martin Luther King quote that came out today because everybody was tweeting them. I'm not so sure that Asia Wilson's wasn't the best quote of the day about her, about her, her family, not being able to walk on this campus and there, there's a statue of her built on it. Man, that's pretty powerful on a day when there were a lot of great quotes. I'm not so sure that one doesn't win quote of the day. Any other questions for coach? Melissa, go ahead. Hey, Mike, back at the Tennessee game, we were talking about how you didn't have any points uh, from the bench, and Aaron Barnum put up 13 today. I know Marquisha Davis had three, but what have you seen that that's kind of from that point to now how they have improved and gotten some of that confidence back? Well, they hit the freshman wall, even though they're both kind of sophomores. In minutes played, they were still freshmen, and everybody hits that, and we got to 15 games quicker than they, we, they, we just got to the wall. Uh, you know, their, their minutes had been scattered. Uh, they had, had both had, you know, some time away with, with uh, uh, injuries and COVID-related things. So it mounted up, and now we're past it. We, we got to the wall. We, we got over the wall or through it. I'm not sure whether we went over it, but we, we went through it. We had great uh, – they had their best two days of practice after some, just some conversations with coaches and the rest of their teammates and, you know, just feeling how important they are to us down the stretch. Uh, as we continue to, you know, mount up and play a bunch of games, we've got to have them not only give us valuable minutes, but contribute. And I, and I thought they really responded. And that's what, that's what I think we'll be most proud of is they listened, they took it and they got over that wall. They didn't let the wall beat them down. Good time to have a week off now for you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, the schedule, the way it fell, having that buy come in there and then and not having any games fall in there. Gives us a chance to, to rest a little bit, catch up, uh, maybe do a little extra film work, but really take care of our bodies. About everybody on our roster has got a training room uh, uh, appointment every day. So it'll be good to kind of catch our second win uh, and go down this last part of the season. It, it doesn't get any easier in this league. I think we had seven teams ranked as of this afternoon. Uh, it seems like every time, I mean, I, I look at the top 25 rankings, it's like our schedule. You know, it's like looking at our schedule. So, uh, but that's what all these kids came here for. So we will use the time off uh, to rest up a little bit, regroup, and, and I hope improve a little bit from it. Dick, go ahead. Coach, can you talk about what Ch what Chelsea brings to your program? Well, she initially just brought uh, the fact that it was a, a good place to come play basketball. You know, she could have gone a lot of places when she transferred, but she bought into our vision uh, way back when – when we weren't very good, when we were picked 14th in our league, not 14th in the country. So, uh, and just the way that she continues to play um, and make our team, she's, she's putting up great numbers on teams that continue to, to compete uh, and win games. Uh, but I, I think what she meant to us being that first kid to say, hey, I'm going to Arkansas, you know, a little bit like, again, not comparing her in Asia, but for, for us and with the situation we were in, she was that kid that said, hey, I'm going to go there. Y'all come with me, uh, and we'll get on ESPN two games. You know, if this would have been a Monday night game three years ago, I can assure you it would not have been ESPN two. Uh, it would not have been. And, and for us to have that game on that, I think those are just little small things, Dick, that I think uh, add up for us and will help leave the legacy that, that she's going to leave on our program. Last one, Paul, go ahead. Okay, hey, Coach, uh, the fact that uh, Vanderbilt uh, opted to uh, end their season today, I was looking at your schedule. That gives you now, after tonight, one game in 13 days. Uh, have, you, have you even thought about that at this point? Yeah, it's my hope that that's not the case. I've already made about four phone calls trying to find a non-conference game for that date. Uh, I really hope that the, the first one I made becomes true. Uh, we'll keep you posted on it, but we went right to work. As soon as we landed, that news broke. And again, that's just keeping in 
just keep it in alignment, Paul, with what this group of kids told us. They said they wanted to lead the country in games played. They want to play every chance they get. They don't care who it's against. They don't care where it is. They don't care when it is. They don't want to have 13 days off. Uh, they know what it felt like to have the, the season stripped away from them. And if the opportunity's there and we can make it work out, I already talked to administration. They're very supportive of it. We just got to make sure we can find the right opponent uh, that makes sense for us. But I sure hope we don't have to take 13 days off um, between now. We just have to be the Georgia. I think Georgia and then it'd be Auburn. Is that right? If I'm Yes. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, we'll we'll figure out a way to do it. All right, thanks, thanks, Coach. Everybody. All right, appreciate y'all.